Now we're going to make this part of the drum. Now I don't recall what this is called. It's a wrapping. Okay. Now, if you do this, wrap it too many times, if you wrap it like, I would say on this size drum, three to four wraps would be perfect sound. If you wrapped it more than four, I'm going to tell you that you're going to get a higher pitch like this. So for an example, I got really excited. I was like, oh, this is so cute. I'm gonna do a pattern. And when I did this, it's super high tinky. But when I did this one, because I learned from my mistake, when I did this one, it's a lot better. Using my hand, it doesn't sound as good as with the striker, but so each time you wrap your inside of your heart of your drum, you want to be mindful of what kind of sound do you want? Do you want a deep bassy sound? Do you want somewhere in between? Um, do you want that high? You, you could want a high note. Um, personally, I like it to be kind of in the middle, so I do three or four um, wraps of the, of, the, of the heart. So we're going to take our working lace. We're going to take her and we're going to wrap the first set, okay? Again, whatever feels comfortable, okay? This one happens to be kind of wrapping already these three right here. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to utilize it. So one, two, three. I'm going to make sure that I get three because there have been times where I've gotten to this point and I've gotten all the way to the end and I'm like, why is there an extra string? I missed a string, which is fine wet your fingers, pull this back out, redo it again, okay? So we're gonna wrap it. You want your wraps to be kind of flat. So I wrapped it once. Wrap it twice. I'm gonna do three. Wrap it three times. And you're gonna take kind of the slip knot that I showed you a minute ago. You're gonna take your finger, and you're gonna put it there like this. I take the last wrap that I did and just loosen it enough where I can put my thumb in it, okay? And then put it in, but I'm holding this nice and tight. So this isn't loosening up by me grabbing it the way I'm grabbing it. So I literally could just slide this piece. I'm sliding it through, but I'm holding it nice and tight with my other hand. So this is, this is the important part because it's making the slip knot, it's making it, it's binding it together, okay? So now I'm gonna do it kind of like a quick, quick jerk just to make sure that it's nice and tight, okay? When I do it this way, the knot goes underneath so it won't be up here and you won't feel it in your fingers. Okay, so that was one. I take whichever one I start with this came out, I'm done. I'm gonna go across from it. So I'm down here. I'm gonna just show you to make it a little bit more visual. So there are three sets here, three sets of two. That makes this three sets of two. And I'm just trying to find where my umbilical. So the, probably my umbilical will be these three over here. That just makes more sense. Just working it out mentally. Okay, so this, the knot is in the back. So I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna slide it underneath, and I'm gonna come up the first side. Again, whatever feels comfortable. You don't have to be, oh, well, Melissa did it this way. I gotta do it this way. Whatever feels comfortable. So I came up from doing these ones, and I came up, and I wanna make sure that I have the three over there for the umbilical, that's for later. And I take this one as it comes up, as it feels comfortable, and I'm gonna wrap this one, this one, and this one. So a set of three. Again, I'm just gonna turn it. It's comfortable for me this way. So I wrapped it once. Pull it through. Wrap it twice. Oh, see, I didn't like that. Personal preference, I just didn't like the way that went. So I'm just pulling it back a little bit and rewinding. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm across from the one that I started at, okay? The reason I'm telling you this is because you did the knot underneath, 
and if you put it anywhere else, it's going to pull the knot to one way or the other. So that's why I'm going across from this knot, okay? So I go across from this knot, one, two, three, all right. And as you can see, so as I pulled it through, it kind of just like followed underneath so it's not bunched up and it's not um, overlapping or anything. So I'm gonna pull it through this one, wrap it once. I have my thumb holding onto it so it doesn't slip and slide. Wrap it twice, pull it through. And wrap it three times. And again, we're gonna do the slip knot. I'm just gonna get myself situated, okay? So I'm holding onto my, my working thread, but I don't wanna get it too loose. So I'm holding onto it, slip my finger into that hole, make a slip knot. Like I said, you could just hold, if, as long as you're holding this piece here, it's keeping it nice and tight together, okay? And pull it through. I tend to like kind of guide it and pull it till it's like last second, and then I just pull tight. And again, you want it to be underneath. So I'm gonna, yep, double check. This is going to be where the umbilical one we do. This is going to be our last one here. So I'm gonna go under. Sure that it's nice. I'm gonna actually go under and start on the outside from the outside over. Just whatever feels comfortable. It doesn't have to be, there's no set way. I've never heard of anybody telling me that there's a set way that this has to be done. Um, I've been told many times by many different teachings to just do what feels comfortable. Okay, so we're now taking our last three strings with our working thread, uh, working lace, and we're gonna wrap it once. twice and three times okay so keep this nice and tight I'm just going to show you how to, to do the slip knot one last time well it will be another time but I'm just going to show you slip your finger in there keep this nice and tight slide it under pull it through we go we're gonna hold it together tighten it until you've got like almost enough and then just tight okay it's not that it's not as difficult as it looks you'll get it okay so now we're gonna work on our umbilical one and then I'll show you how to do the heart of the drum the center of the drum once we've got the third one done okay so I'm gonna find the spot that is comfortable for the lacing so that it's not bunched up. You will feel, when you're holding your drum, you will feel this side, inside. You will feel this, so you don't want it to be a big ball. You want it to be nice and smooth. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting going from one side to the other and the other side to the other. That way it's more smoother and it's running across each other. If you're just going any which way, you might feel that. and. Once you cut your umbilical, you could feel that, um, that little piece. Okay, so our umbilical is the last part that we have to wrap, and it's gonna be this one. I'm actually gonna pull it underneath, just because it looks like it would be more smooth that way. All right, so remember when we went over, under, over, under to separate the four sets? This one already has a wrap here, but we're not gonna count that one. We're gonna count the wrap that we're using as the wrap, okay? So we're gonna wrap. I'm just gonna make this nice and smooth. Once. Twice. And a third time. You see how small this is? We could not have done all those wrappings. Um, with the umbilical. So we take this again. It's wrapped three times. I took the top string, the very last one that I wrapped, I stick my finger in it, pull tight, slip this through, 
and pull tight. So now this is your umbilical. Tuck her in. She's gonna dry there. You don't touch her, cut her until we do a birthing, okay? So now we take our working string. It's feeling a little dry. I'm just gonna wet it a little bit because we're gonna do, now every single person can do something different. You don't have to be elaborate. Um, for an example, on this one, I wanted to be a little fancy and do something really cute for my daughter. But like I said, when I finished this one, it's so tight, like I wrapped it five times on an itty bitty drum. <laughs> I was so excited to make it so intricate and everything that I I didn't know any better. So I wrapped it five times and now it's super tingy. But you know what? She likes it. She likes that it's really, really loud. Um, this one I wrapped three times. I wrapped three times here and then I just, whatever felt comfortable making the knot in the center. You can leave it at this point. You could walk away and be, I'm done, okay? You could trim this piece because this is your lacing. You can trim this piece and put it aside. You can use the piece that you use. Excuse me. You can use the piece that you that you do cut off later for your striker if you wanted to to wrap a piece of it around um, to match your striker to your drum, or you could you could just leave it as is. Okay. I personally like to take this part here and make a heart of the drum. Okay. It's super simple. I wrap it. I go literally over the top two or three times. Wherever it comes out, wherever it feels comfortable, I go back two or three times and then I do a slip knot and I'm done. But I'm gonna show you right here. Okay, so this is the working thread, the working lace. It feels comfortable, as you can see. It feels comfortable to just wrap it like that. So I'm gonna wrap it two or three times on an angle this way. So I wrapped it once. This gives you like a handle to hold on to your drum when you're drumming, and it makes it smoother, I find. I'm just gonna, I could feel a little bit of rough edge there. I'm just gonna put my fingers in water. So one, two, three. Now I don't even do a slip knot yet. So I've wrapped it three times. Oh, the umbilical's kind of in the way, which is fine. I'm just gonna tuck her in there. Make sure she's not locked in. Okay. So I just wrapped it three times in one direction. Now, I don't wanna keep going in the same direction. I wanna make it um, in another direction. I wanna make, my goal right now is to make this part smooth and then this part smooth. So I'm going to take my lace and I'm gonna go over the lacing here. It's not gonna change the sound because we've already developed the wrapping here, okay? So I'm just gonna take this piece because I wanna wrap the opposite way, okay? I'm gonna let it drop down just for me to catch it. There we go. All right, so we wrapped the first three and I just, wanted to wrap in the opposite direction, so I tucked it under and, oh, and, and went through. So now I'm gonna take this, this piece here and I'm gonna wrap it up this way, two or three times. I just wanna make it nice and smooth for this part. Some people, I've seen them do really beautiful weaving through these bits and pieces. I've seen it almost like an art, like so beautiful but I'm just gonna keep it completely simple. And just, I, I prefer this. It makes it nice and smooth in my hand. Twice. Then after, when I'm finished this wrap, we do the last slip knot. See, I'm gonna do four on this side because I just wanna do one more right here. So that's three. And we'll do one more. So it's nice and smooth, that's four. So now I'm gonna take, I wanna make sure that I'm using the right one, the umbilical, she gets stuck sometimes, she gets pulled in. So I'm gonna take the last one that I wrapped. I'm just keeping my hands nice and tight on it. Take the last one that I wrapped, just stick my finger in it like I did the other ones, okay? I'm gonna tuck this in like this. 
but you want your knot on the bottom. You don't want your knot to show. So I'm going to tighten it little by little, loosen it up, straighten it out, do what you need to do to make it nice and smooth. So that's nice and smooth for me, okay? I have my finger there. I've already put the slip knot through and I pull. Now it's nice and tight. It's underneath on the bottom. We're done our working string. We can take our working string and we can cut it. Now, if you want, you want to get as close as you can to the end of the knot, but you don't want to get too close to the knot. So I've left. You can cut this when you do your umbilical, but you don't want to leave, you want to leave enough that it's well, as it dries that there's going to be some of your thread, of your lacing. You don't want to cut it too short and as it dries, it's going to shrink and then you lose the end of your lacing and it could fall apart. So I've left literally just a little, I want to say half an inch right there. So that's, that was my working lace. This is my umbilical. We're gonna save her for when we do a birthing ceremony. So now the drum is done. It's all laced. So now we're gonna take, this is, this is the end part. We take painter's tape. You can take, um, so at Dollarama, not Dollar Tree, because Dollar Tree has a set of four, but Dollarama has a set of eight or 20 <laughs> for the same price. So they have chip clips um, or milk bag chip, uh, milk bag clips, I think they're called, but they're smooth. You don't want um, the clip to have teeth. The teeth will make imprints into the leather. You want it to be nice and smooth. So the smoother, the better, okay? But you don't have to do that. So what I do is I take each little bit. I like, I like the folds. I like all this stuff. Like I, the artist in me, I just, I just see it and, and I love it. So I just like to try and smooth some of it out because we're gonna take the painter's tape and we're gonna wrap it all the way around. So I wanna pull just a little bit, not too tight, okay? Because it changes, it changes the texture if you pull too tight here and pull too tight here. So I'm just gonna pull just to make sure that some of these are folding, some of them are, are bunched. Like for an example, this one was like all like this. I wanted to just pull it just a little bit. Each person is different. You might you might not like this at all. You might want to flatten it completely like this. Completely flat. I like how it kind of um, shows each piece, like each each lacing. For me, I like that it does that. Okay, so we're ju I'm just gonna pull it however you want to do it but we're also making sure that all the way around, um, it doesn't have to be relatively the same size, but you want it to be somewhat smooth because we're about to put painter's tape, which is really, really ticky, tricky. It sticks to walls, but um, it won't stick to the hide and pull from the hide. We want it to be able to um, pin down. Once this is dry, you could, we can take the tape off. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this down for a second. I'm gonna find the edge of the tape. So this is a little, a little tricky. The first wrap, you kind of wrap onto itself. You're gonna wrap onto the tape more than you're wrapping onto the hide, okay? I'll just give you an example, okay? So I like, I like it kind of bumpy, but not too bumpy. So I started here and I want to tape it I like them flatter, but you might like it a different way, which is fine. You might like it however it lands, and that's completely fine. So I'm just going over it. As you can see, it's not stuck, stuck here, okay? So don't pull too hard. So I'm literally going along the side of the bottom rim of the drum, okay? Because we're gonna go, we're gonna wrap her all the way to this brim. So we start at the bottom and we're gonna wrap her all the way. So it's a couple wraps. Okay, I'm just making sure that it's nice and tight. And where I want it flat is flat, where it's bunched, I, I like the bunches.
some people don't like it to have this much um, um, hide at the end. Uh, some people like it to be where you can see the bit of the wood. Um, other people, they like it this way. Um, depends on the person, it depends on, on what you like. Okay, so now we're getting back to the beginning of where we were. So we're gonna go over the tape. It's, it's gonna become easier now that it's together. So now I can go quicker, okay? We're gonna go wrap around. I was making sure the first wrap around that I was getting all the bunches together, getting flat where I needed it to be flat. So now we've gotten all the way around again. I'm gonna say one more time. And what this does is as it dries, it dries nice and tight to the drum. You won't get tinging. You won't get uh, you won't get like a, a a loud pitch. Okay. There we go. So I've wrapped it all the way around. Now I'm going to take this piece here. Okay. So it's nice and tight all the way around. Now my next step. This is why I usually use the clips. But I forgot to bring them with me today. Okay, so the clips, when you clip it, you won't need to tape it if you use the clips, okay? If you use the clips, you're gonna use the clip in between each one to pin down the excess hide, okay? But in the meantime, we could always take tape and tape it down. This only has to stay this way until it dries. I, it doesn't even have to be that long. It could be a couple hours. See, like it, it, it's hard to do this way. It's a little bit harder for you guys. So if, if, if you get clips, get clips. So I put it first, I put it first going this way and then I did it across to kind of hold it down. So let me see if that stays. Because remember, we soaked, we, we used oil on it earlier, so it's a little bit oily. The residue is a little bit harder. That's why we use painter tape though, because the painter's tape is less likely to tear the leather, the hide. So I'm gonna actually do a couple of the ones going down, and then I'm gonna put a ring together going across. <laughs> don't panic all right so we're gonna put that there and then I'm gonna try to get these two together I'll show you once I have it together you just kind of want these to clip down a little bit and if it's sticking up just go over it again with the tape or a clip then you would clip it all the way around or tape it all the way around to each and every one single of the one. main things about being creative that I love is that what you may see as an imperfection other people see as a, cr a creation of art I love the perfectly imperfect things to me they are perfect when you're being creative the sky's the limit you can do whatever you want you don't have to stick to a, a regimen of this is how it's got to be. Oh, I saw Melissa make it this way. Be creative, make mistakes, have fun doing it, and it will turn out beautiful. I have all the confidence in the world. So what I'm doing is I literally took tape, but you can use clips as well. I'm taking the tape and pinning it down. I pinned it down this way, and now I'm just gonna go quickly throughout it and make sure that they stick down. If you are using clips for this, um, if there are wide clips, you would put one, let's tack this one down and I'll show you. If you use clips instead of tape, you would take a clip 
in between the sets of two. So I would put a clip, one clip if it was wide, right here, if they were skinny, skinny clips, I'd put one here and one right here to, to pin it down. Now you would only need to pin it down until it's dry, not even fully dry. It just has to dry enough that it will stay that way. Now, we're gonna talk about drum safety, drum respect, some of my teachings, okay? One of the teachings I've learned is you never disrespect the drum and you put it face down. Once it is dry, you are to keep it and take care of it and respect the drum, okay? A very key thing is you never play your drum um, if you've been drinking, you never play your drum if you're high, okay? You, it is a sacred item, um, it is given to us from Creator and it has a spirit of its own. We wanna respect the drum, okay? Respect it by putting it down. When I'm drying the drum, I usually leave it just like this and I'll rotate it. I'll rotate it until it's completely dry and then once it's dry I will leave it like this another key thing of when your drum is drying for four days do not touch the front of the drum I know you're gonna go oh I just want to hear how it sounds oh I want to see how it's come along don't touch it what happens is there are my daughter touched this one now it may not you guys won't notice you don't see it I see it. There's just this little, little pucker right here in it. It's no big deal. But if you touch it a lot, you're gonna have several puckerings all over it. So general rule of thumb is not to touch your drum for four days. So I leave my drum, like there's a little tiny little, little dent here. Cause she just got excited and she just walked up to it and touched it. But that little bit of a touch while it's wet, stretch the, stretch the hide and it's there. Now. I haven't birthed this drum, so I could, if I wanted to, take it apart, relace it, tighten it back up. But I like perfectly imperfect, so I'm gonna leave it the way it is, okay? But if it is a bigger hole, you're gonna, like a, a indent, you're gonna notice. Another thing is if you do get an indent when it's dry, once it's dry, to make it tighten back up again, you can take, um, you can take your drum and you could put it over the element on your stove you can put it near a fire, you can um, put it in the sunlight, and what that does is the sunlight and the fire and the heat tightens up the hide again, and if there was any dents or indents or anything, it will take it apart, but not to stress and worry about it. If it is that way, it is completely fine. Um, I have taken apart a whole drum just because of one dent, but if we leave this the way it is, for four days, I know you're gonna you're gonna want to touch it. Don't touch it for four days, and just leave it as is for four days. Let it dry, and we'll move on to the striker. And so we're going to discuss about uh, being respectful of our drum. So I talked earlier about um, you know you don't put your drum face down and, and disrespect your drum. You don't play your drum when you are drinking or doing drugs um, it's a sacred item and it's medicine to us so we um, we keep this safe and one of the ways that I like to keep it safe and that I was taught to keep it safe is to wrap your drum when you're not using it um, you could put it in um, a bag uh, usually use cotton so what I did was for my daughter's one this is just an actual fleece scarf so when I'm carrying this and I'm traveling with it, I like to put it in here and wrap it this way once and wrap it this way another time. And then I tuck it in and I can put it in a bag and carry it with me. Um, you can use a cotton bag, you can use a reusable bag, um, but to keep it safe, um, you also don't want it to absorb energy um, and keep it safe. Uh, for my bigger drum, I took a fleece blanket and cut it in half and use it for my big drum. So this is the biggest one that I have, which is 16 inches, and it wraps beautifully. So 
So this one, because it's so big, I just wrap it, uh, wrap it four times and then tuck it and then I stick it in a bag and I keep it safe. So you want to do that. So we're going to carry on to the striker. Now this, this, the strikers that you're getting in your kit are super, super, super easy, okay? You're gonna get a Glover needle, which you need to be really, really careful. These are used to work with leather and we are leather in a sense, so you wanna be careful not to stick your finger. It will go through skin and flesh because that's what they're for. They're to go through leather. So you have a Glover needle. You should have one, a piece of leather that's cut out into a circle. Well, this one's not completely in a circle. I'll cut that in a second. And you'll have some sinew. So I'm gonna take the sinew first. I'm gonna take about an arm's length. Doesn't really matter. You can cut extra just in case you have enough. You can always cut more. And you're going to split the sinew Sometimes it, it frays a little bit, so you want to split it. Into a thinner piece. This one is perfect. So we started with, we started with a thick piece, but we wanted a little bit thinner. Now sinew is waxy. Uh, sticky, your hands will stick to it. My fingers are now sticking together. But we started with a super thick piece, and now we have a skinnier piece. So now I'm gonna cut, and you're gonna take this piece here and you're gonna cut the shape of the circle out. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see the line better. <laughs> and I have to thread the needle in a second, so I want my glasses on. So you're just gonna cut all the way around the circle. Some scissors won't work at all on leather. Um, I find I use, I, I'm cutting a lot of leather and hide and things, so I have an actual pair of um, meat cutting scissors that you get with a butcher block. I use those a lot for my leather and hide. They seem to work like I could cut this like really quick, but you use what you have. So just cut along the line. I'm pretty sure every single kit will have one of these. Um, the kits are coming from Tribal Spirit and they make sure that every kit has everything it needs. Doesn't have to be completely perfect. Remember, imperfectly perfect is perfect. Or perfectly imperfect is perfect. Okay. So you just cut the excess off, you make it into a complete circle. I like to, if you could see any of the, the circle, I like to put that face down. So you're gonna get a stick, and in the stick there's gonna be a little tiny hole that goes right through both sides, okay? So you're gonna take a little bit of your sheep's wool. After touching the sheep's wool, you will need to wash your hands. It's coming from an animal, it's stinky, it's smelly. It hasn't been processed. There's little bits in, of animal and dirt on it. So I'm using about this much of the sheep's fur, sheep's wool, and I'm just kind of separating it a little bit to kind of fluff it up because it come, it's been squished into the bag and it's all tight. So I want it to be a little bit fluffy because this is going to be the part that you strike your drum with and that's why it's called a striker. So I just made it fluffier. So that little tiny ball is now a bigger ball. But I'm kind of, I fluffed it, and now I'm sticking it together. So actually, before we do that, we're gonna lace, thread it. 
spread our needle. And if you can't get it through the needle, eye of the needle, then it's a little bit too thick. So this one's a little bit thick. Yeah, it's a little bit thick. So it's naturally, it's naturally separating. So we're gonna pull it apart again one more time. You can sometimes split a piece of sinew into four or five different strands, but we're gonna split this in half again because it was not going through the eye of the needle. And because it is waxy, you can actually, if it frayed or came apart, you can twist it again and it will reform. So you're gonna take one end on a double threader, like a two line thread. So I always double, double lines, okay, it came apart. I'm gonna twist it back together. the eye of my needle I've double double threaded it I'm gonna make it relatively the same height or just length I'm going to knot it okay this is a knot I use in a lot of my art so I just wrap it twice stick it through and before I pull it out Pull my finger out and I want to oh, okay, try that again. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it twice. It's of course, giving me trouble. Thank goodness for editing. All right, so we're gonna wrap it twice. We're gonna take the needle, put it through here, like this, and then as I pull my fingers out. I'm kind of taking the, the needle and you can see the little knot there and I'm pulling it to make a knot. There we go. And it's made a knot. This we can cut after and burn, but right now we want it to be a little bit thick. And then we're gonna find the hole on your striker. I like to do it this way before I put everything on it and then I can't find the hole. So I put it there you want the hole to be big enough that it stops the thread from going through. So. Okay. Then you're going to take your fluffy. You might not need all of it. Okay. We're going to, I'm going to start with a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to wrap a piece of wood. Okay. And I can still feel the stick. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Okay. I didn't end up using all of it, but there we go. And then you take your cut piece of leather. You're going to take your cut piece of leather. I'm going to take the part where you can see the outline and I'm going to put that on the inside so you won't see it. So now I want to see how much I, I need for my striker. I'm going to stuff it in. I'm st kind of stuffing it, stuffing it. Okay, so I have way too much. Let's see. Yeah, too much. So I'm going to start back a little bit, to take a little bit out. Because it was too big. And then you're going to take, you want to kind of stuff it up and in up and in. I just want to make sure that it's kind of even. Okay. So now I want to anchor, that's what I call it, is anchoring the hide to the needle. And I'm just going to put it through one time here, through the hide, I mean through the leather, one time. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it all the way around. 
I want to try to center it, but it's not 100% necessary. So I'm going to wrap it once. I'm going to wrap it twice. I'm going to do it, see if I can do it four times, our sacred number. Two, three, four. So then I just take it, I'll make sure you can see that, literally stuff it under. There's no wrong way of doing this, guys. Okay, there's like a little bit of a knot. And then I'm anchoring it again to make sure that it's um, gonna stay in place. You don't wanna be striking your drum and then the top of your striker fall off. So I'm just kind of doing like a slip stitch quickly, two or three times. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So I have this one, it's done. There we go. If you want, you can trim off the excess, you can fix it all up. So we're gonna cut this and then burn it. This is the one I did really, really quick just now. This is one that I took a little bit more time, made sure that it was completely even all the way around. When you're done, you can trim this. You can take, you take the piece of sinew, cut it close to the, to the end, but you don't have to be too close because we're gonna burn it. So keep your glover needle safe. I usually stick it in, um, my workspace, I have a little workspace, but I stick it in there. So you're gonna take the end of the sinew. You don't wanna burn the leather. I just put my finger between the leather and the hide, I mean the leather and the sinew, and burn. Make sure that it kind of balls up. And then that's done. It doesn't have to be perfect. I took a little bit more time on this one and made sure that it was completely centered, um, but super simple, super easy. The whole point is when you're striking your drum is for it to be cushioned. And if it's too, um, if there's not enough stuffing in it, you'll actually hear the wood hitting the hide instead of the cushion hitting the hide. done the drum. We've let it dry for four days. We've made our striker. Everything's done. Everything's ready. So after the four days, we're going to take, whether you've taped it or clipped it, we're going to take those off. We are going to cut the umbilical. We are going to offer a spirit plate. It could be something really simple. It could be a salad. It could be some berries, it could be anything simple. It doesn't have to be extravagant, um, but you offer a spirit plate out by a tree in nature to creator. You thank mother earth for everything that she's provided. She provided the tree that gave you the wood to make the drum. She provided, mother earth provided the deer that gave you the hide to make it, the sheep's fur, uh, the sheep's wool to make the striker, the leather to make the striker. So we thank Creator, we thank Mother Nate, Mother Mother Earth, and Mother Nature, um, and we light some sage. We say a little pra prayer for ourselves and for the animal and the tree, um, and then you sing a song. I like using the water song. I think it's beautiful, and uh, I, that's how I was taught to do that. But then you sing it and use it. I also. Once it's ready to be feasted, as I'm feasting it, I usually take a little bit of bear grease. It's not necessary, but I take a little dab of bear grease and I will rub it all over the front of it. And I will take some of the spirit plate, if I use berries for an example, because deer eat berries. So I try to think of things that the deer would have eaten. So like the, the, the salad with maybe some raspberries or strawberries. And I take those and I rub it into the drum and as I'm doing it I'm thinking good things and I'm thinking thank you to creator and thank you mother earth and thank you for everything once I rub it in I actually eat the berry and I feel I was taught in a teaching that it connects you to your drum so I do that 
every time I birth a drum, I rub the berry juice all over the berry and then I eat the berry. Um, before I do that, I usually add a little bit, literally a drop of bear grease and it rubs all over. I did a drum in October and it's still, you can still feel the bear grease. Usually I've been told to feast the drum before giving it away. Um, unless the person is an elder or something that they maybe have the knowledge to do it and they, they may want to feast it, the person that you're giving it to. I've also been taught that the first drum that you make typically is supposed to be given away, but it's not necessary. It is an old tradition, um, but it's not necessary. For an example, I made my very first drum um, for my daughter and I gave it to her. And then the next drum I made for myself and the next one for my mom and I made one for everybody. But traditionally, they say that the first drum that you make should be given away or with the intent of giving it um, to someone. But it's not necessary that you can get, uh, you put a lot of work into it. I know you're gonna wanna keep it. So quickly, I'm going to talk about a teaching I had. Um, I've had many teachings regarding um, indigenous drums. One of my favorite teachings, um, I was taught by a gentleman named Steve Teagan, and he told me that it was from the Lakota Nation. And so the story goes that there was this little girl, a young girl who, seeing her nation fighting each other and fighting other nations, and everybody was at war at one point, um, she just wanted something more. So she kept going to every elder that she met and every person that she met, every shaman, every person um, asking, there's gotta be another way. There's gotta be a, something we can do um, to live a better, better life. And it got to the point where the elders would see this little girl coming and they'd be like, oh gosh, here comes this little girl with all these questions. And they would kind of try to avoid her. And she never gave up, she kept asking, she kept talking to people and trying to think of some other way that um, her nation would stop fighting amongst themselves and other nations. So one day, Creator came to an elder and said that they wanted their most loyal and um, person who believes the most to come um, talk, to, talk to the Creator. So. They thought right away, the elder said, I know the perfect person, it's this little girl, she's so inquisitive, she has all these questions, she wants a better way. So they sent her to the forest to do uh, fasting and to go meet Creator. Well, she ended up staying in the forest from one moon cycle to the next moon cycle, and which is a long time, this could be 28 days. And she stayed out there, not eating, not drinking, completely fasting the whole time until one night, Creator brought the big drum, which is just a really, really, really big drum. It takes many people to carry. This big drum came floating from the sky, never touching the ground. It hovered over um, around this little girl and Creator taught this young girl how to make a drum, the teachings behind the drum, the different songs for women, the different songs for men, everything you would need to do to care for the drum, everything she needed to know she was taught by Creator. She was told that the drum is her responsibility to take care of it, to respect it, to not drink when you're um, doing your drum, to not do drugs while you're using your drum, to be of pure mind, body, and spirit. And she was asked by Creator to take this drum and all of her teachings back to her people and teach them. She took it as an honor and brought that drum, that big, big drum. She carried it all the way back to her nation. She taught her people, the Lakota people, how everything that Creator just taught her. And she wanted to then go from that, her nation, to the next nation, and the next nation, and the next nation, and teach them too. Well, the biggest, strongest warriors wanted to carry this drum for her and, and take this drum for her and take that burden from her. And she's like, no, it's my responsibility. I've created this drum, I need to take care of it, I need to respect it, and it's my responsibility. So she carried, this young girl, carried this big drum to every single nation with the biggest warriors supporting her and guiding her and protecting her to each nation. And they brought this knowledge to each nation. And instead of fighting amongst themselves and each other, they decided to battle it out, drumming and music. and. What I love about this story is it took one girl, one person to not give up 
and to think of a better way. There's got to be a better way than everybody just fighting amongst each other and amongst other nations. So she just did not give up and she kept going, kept asking questions. And that's the part that I love because traditionally women aren't supposed to touch drums. Women are told to be on the kind of the outer circle of, of the drum. You have the big drum in the center and then you have the smaller hand drums and then and on and on the, the four circles around in a powwow. But depending on where you're from, here in Toronto, um, our nation, we're allowed to touch, women are allowed to touch drums and we're allowed to use them and we're allowed to sing and we're allowed to love this music and this medicine and have this medicine spread from person to person. And when I hear the drum, when I come to a powwow, when I come to any place and I hear that big drum, I hear that heartbeat and I hear my people and I know that I'm belonging and that I will be welcomed. And I love that feeling. I love that we teach our kids to drum. I love that we teach our women to drum. I love that we teach our men to drum. I love that it's equal across the board to have this medicine in our life and to respect it and I love that. I love that teaching. I really, really do. <laughs> Another thing that uh, I was taught is that a woman on her moon time should not touch a drum. Um, a lot of people think it's just an old wives tale, but I actually know I have a friend who's a doctor and we secrete an actual chemical out of the tips of our fingers, out of every pore of our body when we're on our moon time, we secrete this chemical that changes things. And so when they say not to touch, you know, you shouldn't be cooking, you shouldn't be creating art, you shouldn't be doing drums when you're on your moon time, respect that because it's real. One thing that a lot of people may not be aware of, I know a lot of people might think that women being on their moon time, um, they might be dirty or they're not pure enough to be using medicines such as drums. The reality is that women are stronger and they're more spiritual when they're on their moon time. So to protect ourselves and our spirit, we shouldn't be doing certain things when we're on our moon time. So to respect that and keep that teaching alive and well, and don't touch your drum. We're powerful as is as people, as humans, but as part of women on our moon time, we're even more powerful. So respect that and don't touch the drum. Hi friends, so we've concluded how to make a drum. So we've, shown you how to tie-dye, we've shown you how to prepare everything, we've shown you how to make a striker, we've taught you how to respect the drum and how to take care of it. And I just wanted to say thank you all for coming today and watching this video. And I hope that you guys make beautiful music and beautiful medicine with your drums and enjoy every minute.